Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. A high-level agriculture delegation aimed at boosting cooperation with the Republic of China-Taiwan reports success. The Larissus Road in Beaufort is now formally closed as government's development plans progress and the Chamber of Commerce to dialogue with Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney. A high-level agriculture delegation aimed at boosting cooperation in agriculture between St. Lucia and Taiwan ended five days of consultations on Friday, 9th November 2018. The team from the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives consisted of Ministers Honorable Ezekiel Joseph and Honorable Herod Stanislas with support from St. Lucia's Ambassador to the Republic of China, Taiwan, Edwin Laura. On the agenda at the meetings held with the Taiwanese officials and then the International Cooperation and Development Fund with the challenges facing agriculture and farming in St. Lucia and how productivity could be strengthened. The ministers also highlighted to their Taiwanese counterparts the devastating impact on agriculture of the hurricanes and severe weather that St. Lucia has experienced in recent years. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, provided an update following the visit. Because in 2008, we signed a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Agriculture in St. Lucia and the government of Taiwan as it pertains to a number of programs that they committed themselves to give support to. Um, so the trip was more or less following up on, on that memorandum of understanding and, and again to get an appreciation as to the new technologies that have been developed over the past 10 years and for us to be able to see how we can um, adopt this technology as, we, as, if, as it's going to support our agricultural development because um, we have a number of programs that we have ongoing between the two governments and specifically in 2019, January 2019, we shall see the commencement of our import substitution program and it was for us now to have an appreciation as to the technologies that have been developed that will assist us to be able to implement that program and to be successful. It was also recognized that the changes in the global climate is affecting the agricultural sector. As a result, St. Lucia's agriculture is under pressure to adapt and build resilience. The meetings explored how best the countries can collaborate to address the challenges. Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, said there were many positives coming out of the trip. It was a very successful um, um, trip. We had some very, very um, fruitful discussions with some key agencies in Taiwan regarding the development of agriculture, agro-processing and even value-added to the agricultural sector. So all in all, it was a very successful trip, and we look forward to continue our collaboration with Taiwan and uh, the people and government of Taiwan. The ministers expressed satisfaction with the mission and the expectations for enhanced collaboration and support from Taiwan in the upgrading of local agriculture and the revitalization of the banana industry. Export St. Lucia will host an Export Competitiveness Symposium this week as part of activities planned for Business Month. The discussion workshops will address the challenges that clients face in the export process. Jason Darius, Public Relations Officer for Export St. Lucia, says the organization's intent is to bridge the gaps that are encountered during the export process. Export St. Lucia's activity for Business Month. Great is of course the export competitiveness symposium that is happening on november 16th mm. that is uh, friday at uh, sandals halcyon from 8 a.m okay. um the whole thrust behind the actual initiative is to actually target some of the issues affecting our clients and to meet those needs and to really bridge those gaps with a few panels uh, up for discussion and um really to really identify them and bridge them moving forward Three workshops, each with a different focus, will encompass the symposium. For example, our first workshop for that day is our export and energy workshop, mm -hmm. which will examine and consider conservation methods which can be em 
employed towards the reduction of cost and production for our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is shipping and logistics for exports. The idea is to advise and inform exporters of the process, best practices, do's and don'ts, and available services for exports. Mm. And the third component is creative money. Oftentimes we help the creative sector and not being really a driver or pusher towards the island's GDP. Mm -hmm. We want to look at what uh, factors really affect that and how we can actually change that mindset and probably make uh, the actual playing field for um, creatives a little bit greener, so mm -hmm. to speak. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy has informed the public, in particular residents of Viewfort and Environs, of the formal closure of the Larissus Road between the George Odlum Stadium and the Larissus Bridge effective Thursday, November 15, 2018. This closure is necessary to facilitate the construction of a new road to the pending multi-million dollar world-class Hiranora International Airport Terminal. This project will also better connect the South to new social and economic investment opportunities. Residents and the motoring public advise that a new bypass road has been constructed, providing very minimal disturbance to the normal commute. Residents and drivers are encouraged to pay close attention to directional and road traffic signs, which will be posted for public guidance and safety. Construction of the new road will improve road safety when turning into Larissus of the Fort. The project includes construction of 1.6 kilometers of road, which includes a site clearance, general excavation, dual carriageway, construction, construction of drainage systems, and undertake utility transfer work. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy applauds residents and motorists for their continued patience and support during the execution of this project, which paves the way for the injection of new life and investment in the South. As part of activities for Energy Awareness Month 2018, the Energy Unit of the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy this week continued to roll out its education campaign targeting schools in the south of the island. The education campaign involved interactive sessions aimed at educating students on the energy landscape in St. Lucia. Public Utilities Officer Mr. Kurt English says, sensitization of the youth is vital if St. Lucia is to achieve a sustainable energy future. We always hear persons say that the youth are the future, right? And if we can get the youth to understand the energy that they use, the energy that we use as a country, then we can ensure that going into the future that we are secured and we are in good hands. The real-life demonstration of how an electric vehicle works and the opportunity to drive in one of these state-of-the-art cars is a major highlight of the education campaign. Science teacher at the Clendon Mason Memorial, Ms. Augusta Emanuel says she was extremely pleased with the hands-on nature of the exercise, which gives students a realistic appreciation for the technology. It is important that our students understand, first of all, the effects of the type of energy that we are currently using on the island, and as well to become aware of what is available. We found out today that St. Lucia is exploring geothermal, wind, solar energy, and in the very near future, we could be in a position to provide 77% of the nation's energy. Students at the Monrepo Combine welcome the opportunity on Monday to learn about the exciting opportunities in energy. I have learned that there are many different types of resources. It's important for us as children to know about, about energy and how we can conserve it and waste it. I learned that you don't waste electricity that much, that we have a lot of useful resources here in Senecio. The school visits are in keeping with activities in observance of Energy Awareness Month, which has been celebrated under the theme Pursuing Energy Independence. For the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, I am Kubika Jadav. This is Nation Beat. Coming up, members of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce to dialogue with the nation's Prime Minister. I have my mobile, landline, cable TV and internet service. If I have a problem with any of the services, what should I do? Here's what you should do to resolve the problem. First, get and fill out a complaint form and lodge your complaint with the service provider. If after 30 days there is still no solution, you may contact your National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, NTRC. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. 
Welcome back. Continuing with its program of facilitating the Chamber's engagement with key government officials at various levels on the issues of importance to its members, the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture has organized another event in its series of encounters. This time, members will have the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one engagement with the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Lucia. The Chamber has requested that the Prime Minister provide an update on many economic issues and programs announced in the 2018-2019 budget. The Prime Minister will be joined by Theo King, the developer of the Pearl of the Caribbean DSH project. The Chamber Encounter Series is a key program for debate, dialogue, definition and understanding of economic and social issues of interest to the institution. This event also forms part of celebrations of the Global Entrepreneurship Week and Business Month. The encounter is scheduled for 4 p.m. November 15, 2018 at the Palmville Conference Room, Coco Palm Hotel. The Chamber is meanwhile planning for its 134th Annual General Meeting, scheduled for November 28, 2018, where a panel discussion on the theme Invigorating the Local Investment Climate will be held. The island's first indigenous financial institution is this year celebrating the milestone anniversary of 80 years of service to the nation and contribution to nation building. First National Bank is also undergoing changes to its product offerings as it continues to improve the financial services landscape. Since it first opened its doors in 1938, we've seen First National Bank evolve over the years to meet the needs of St. Lucia nationals everywhere. From changing its name and vision from the St. Lucia Cooperative Bank in 2004 to First National Bank and to becoming the first to introduce mobile banking in St. Lucia and today revamping its website to make it more educational and user-friendly for its 80th anniversary. According to Marketing Officer Sheridan Plummer, the hope for this website is to bring customers to what it considers the vital branch. The process which got us here today was a long process, one that took a lot of planning and weeks and months of long meetings. The decision to launch a new website was as a result of our customers. We listened, we took notes, and we made the changes to make browsing our website easier. According to Executive Manager for Marketing and Public Relations, Robert Favrier, the new website provides enhanced functionality and is designed to highlight information without prolonged searches. This ultra-modern site, with its clean lines and fresh look, enables easy browsing of content from the About Us tab covering the bank's history, its ATF journey, the leadership team, which by the way is 100% St. Lucian. We have taken the time to share our vision, our mission, and also our core values, more importantly, with you. The website also reflects the full suite of products and services of First National Bank, and according to officials, is both educational and productive for business purposes. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority continues efforts at ensuring that all St. Lucians benefit from a cleaner environment. A bin removal and beautification exercise began Wednesday, November 14, in busy cast trees. Residents serviced by the bins will be required to place household garbage at the designated collection point or along the concrete road from their homes on Tuesdays and Fridays by 7 a.m. Bulk waste collection service will be provided on the first Saturday of every month. All residents are therefore encouraged to play their part to ensure that the former location of the bins and the community remain free of garbage by obtaining a garbage bin or suitable container for storage of solid waste at home and placing solid waste out only on the designated collection days for the community. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority encourages residents to do what is required in order to keep BC clean. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.